Hey, this is Bill DeWeese here with Long Strange Journey, and uh, we're here in Palm Harbor in my driveway, and uh, we're working on a boat project today so that we can take more Long Strange Journeys, including one next week to Stinhatchee, which I'm really excited about for a four-day weekend of fishing. Uh, but we did a makeover on the boat uh, and did a lot of topside work and did a couple of other interesting little features, like for me, adding the second Lowrance unit, uh, which was a very helpful addition to the boat. And, uh, but it revealed something that uh, causes me to move towards an improvement in my batteries. So what we're going to be doing in this is we're gonna be removing the dual battery, the basic fundamental dual battery system that came with the boat. It's a dual starting battery um, with a switch that is one, two, or all, or one, two, and one plus two, and then there's obviously off. And uh, what that does is allow you to have two starting batteries in the boat, uh, but there are some side uh, drawbacks to this configuration. Uh, one of them will go through, but principally it involves my Lowrance, uh, which is sensitive to power sags. And now that I have two Lowrance units, you know, when you started the engine on a single battery or on the batteries, you would see a sag in voltage. The Lowrance has a very precise dropout sort of soft reset glitch that you see whenever the battery voltage feeding it drops below 10 volts. Well, we don't normally drop below 10 volts, but when these 800 CCA batteries are throwing all their power across the starter of your outboard, it sags the voltage. And so all right, so today we're checking out this on the digital storage scope. And you can see the blue line is up high. That's the 12.5, 12.6 resting voltage. And what you're gonna see when I start the engine is a transition in that blue line. It's gonna show you the sag. It's DC and I'm not set it up to capture it in microscopic detail, but you'll see the sag. So it sags from the resting voltage drops down. And so what it would produce is a little glitch on the screen, no big deal. Uh, I've done that for three years, it's never harmed anything. But what happens is now I have two Lowrance units. Those two Lowrance units are um, synchronized over Wi-Fi with one another. And so those will, at the time of boot, they will synchronize their cartography. Um, that synchronization of cartography can take up to two minutes and it's a time when the Lowrance is pretty much unusable, something I would never have experienced prior because there was no syncing involved. So the simplest, the way the Lowrance Elite TI2s work, you can share, you can't share side scan across the Wi-Fi, you can't share fish reveal across the Wi-Fi, but you can share the basic down scan. And that's exactly what we're sharing across these units. Works really quickly for these older units, but when you boot them and they do that synchronization, that takes about two minutes. Uh, and, and it's a time when you don't have cartography. This is important. I run Florida marine tracks. I go to strange areas. I go into the nature coach where the bottom is hard. I don't want to be running without Florida marine tracks. Uh, so I don't want to wait. So, so to that effect, our goal today is to swap out those two starting batteries, keeping the one, the newer one that I put in, which is a brand new battery, and I still have one 800 CCA DECA starting battery that I'll now retire, and I'm adding an ACR. An ACR is an automatic charging relay. Sometimes they'll be referred to as an automatic combiner relay, and we're now moving from a starting battery on the starboard side and a starting battery on the port side and the aft of the, of the boat and the equipment locker towards the port side battery will now be a marine deep cycle battery. It has a cold cranking amp, but it also is essentially a deep cycle battery. That's gonna be what we traditionally refer to a house battery. Or an RV, you might refer to it as a coach battery. But that's going to now, instead of everything being driven off one post, both the engine, all the electronics, and going forward, all the, all the cabinet electronics, and then going forward to the console, and all the console electronics, we're now going to be running the console traditionally off the house battery. Um, and then what the ACR does is it is like a dog at the door. It's monitoring the voltage. And if it's in the 12.5, 12.6, the standing voltage, it's going to separate the two positive leads of the battery. 
uh, when it when you start your engine and it detects the charging voltage of 13.6, 13.8. Um, it's now going to let that sort of debounce that to make sure that's a stable charging voltage and the battery, the principal starting battery is charging. Then it's going to shut those two, shunt those two batteries together through the relay part of the automatic charging relay. And now that's going to share the charging voltage across to the port battery. So when the engine's running and everything's stable, we're charging both batteries. When the engine is turned off, it breaks the connection so that if you're sitting there with a stereo or some large current drain, you're never going to run down and get to the point where your battery will not start. It does uh, have an option like um, the other before, this yellow option here. So it's now went from one, two, and all to off and on for basic operation. But you do have a combined operation if you get into some situation where maybe your stator is not um, charging your battery so this never kicks in and you slowly run down your battery you can bridge these two batteries to be able to start your engine and limp home and go figure out whether or not you have corroded terminals or whether you have some kind of problem with your engine not charging your batteries so without further ado that's what we're gonna do Okay, this is the old 88 Maverick. This is where all the magic is gonna happen. And uh, what we have here are two equipment lockers. On the starboard side, we have our principal starting battery and that little hole to the right of the fuel water separator is where the battery switch goes. The nice thing about this configuration is the new blue C is the exact same form factor as the old blue C. So what that does is I don't need to actually modify anything about how that battery switch goes in. It just drops right into the same place, a couple, one extra wire, because we split now, one extra terminal, because we split now the power going forward and the power going backwards. And uh, so there's four terminals instead of three. Uh, and then over here on the port side, I've already taken the old battery out, um, uh, the tw group 24 starting battery. We're gonna put the ACR here because that's a crowded area, but I still want on the starboard side, it's where I typically reach in and do my power shut on, shut off and do other things. Uh, that means I'm gonna run a little wire back and forth and running four gauge wire, so it won't be a problem. And uh, then, uh, so I'm wasting a little bit of wire to start moving some items over here because that area on the other side is getting crowded. There is an LED indicator on the ACR. I want to be able to view that. So this gives me an ability to quickly, easily go and in view, in view that. So let's look at the, So with all of that in mind, that's the plan. Um, this is, let's look at the ingredients list to our project. So we're taking out a group 24. So I've got a battery hold down system. You could use a black box. Uh, technically you should use a black box if it is a battery that is not sealed. I actually like these. These are really nice. I use the black boxes up in the bow because every one of my wires are completely contained inside of the battery housing. And uh, I've added some quick disconnects for charging. So I never have to have any wires in the way of other things because up front you put in all kinds of stuff from cast, net, cast nets, fish uh, landing nets, uh, all kinds of gadgets go up in there, extra um, P P PFDs, all that stuff that comes in and out, comes in and out, especially like if you're snorkeling, you're gonna wanna put your scuba gear, snorkel gear up there, because that's a wet locker. And uh, so all that's all sealed back here, that's just all equipment. So I don't need it to be in a black box. I really don't want it to be in a black box. So out with the group 24, in with the group 27, group 31, uh, this is the old unit that goes by the wayside. This is the new unit. Um, this is the new ACR. It actually quickly connects in. It's got some sense voltages here. And there's some also some remote LEDs. You can make it more convenient to monitor. The, this is not going in some far, far out of the way place. So I'm not doing that. Um, then this will bolt into that port backside of the locker and good to go. All set, got an abundance a four gauge wire and the four gauge wire will be uh all the, the grounds are not really changing here on this dual battery configuration but the positive leads are changing so got an ample supply of this and then we have two fuses um they call for the wire for each battery's positive is going to come in to these posts now this is technically just going to combine these or open these but they still call for a fuse to be on either side. 
So I have two of these. So there we go. So that's what we've got for the wiring. So then we obviously we got a bunch of these. These are four gauge uh, wire terminals for batteries and for other terminal connections. All these are large terminal connections. So I've got uh, a dozen or so of these to make sure that I have all of the all the terminals are, are nicely done um, and with marine grade wire and marine grade terminals. And I got a bunch of these so that I can cap all this stuff off in a nice way. Um, and this is another thing I'll call out. My good friend uh, showed uh, me this, and I kind of really I have a um, a Klein crimping tool that's for your ordinary wiring that you're going to be doing out to 10 gauge. But obviously we're working with some Beastie Boy wire here. Uh, I used to do this with a pair of, I have a large pair of vice grips and vice grips were a great way to crimp these. Um, but this is actually from Lincoln um, welding and it is for making your terminal for I guess ground and other connections that you make often enough on a, when you're welding, but you put your terminal in there with your wire and you pound on this with a hammer and you get a really nice, you know, trapezoidal squeeze, I guess you would call it. So you get a uniform crimp on this without having to have some really crazy expensive tool. This is like $19. I definitely have made a few of these terminals as I groom my connections up front for my trolling motor battery and the rear battery connections a lot so i am glad to have this at home and um not be kind of um rigging it with a pair of vice grips or the vi the bench vice this so that's everything on the ingredients list and we are now getting underway all right so we're out here and the project is done uh, you'll notice that it's dark uh but uh, part of that is because this older, it's a new battery, but it has been out of a boat for a, a bit and sitting. So this battery, the new um, house battery, which is the deep cycle battery, uh, had uh, less than 11 volts. So it had been sitting for a while. I let it sit for a bit and let that charge build up. So we're up to 12. That's 12.8 volts, 12.78 volts actually. And uh, so this battery here is 1203 so it's charging but it's not fully charged you can see right i'm going to raise this up and let you see the reason behind this there's the two lawrence units right let's start this boat No flicker, no flash, no power sag, because that light is not lit. These two batteries are separated. This battery right now only reads its original voltage, 12.0. If we test that battery on the other side, this battery is going to read 13 whatever coming out of the engine, 14.49 volts. So the good old Suzuki is charging the main battery. In a moment, you'll see a green light click on. There it is. That light just clicked on. That LED is telling me that the ACR has debounced. So the engine's not coming on and going off and the 13 volts is not coming and going and coming and going. It's a stable 13 uh, or charging voltage. So it's debounced the charging voltage. It's really happy with what it sees. So it goes ahead and throws it across the second battery. charging voltage. That's excellent. This is exactly what this was designed to do. And the most important thing, as you saw when I started that engine, was the stability in the Lowrance units. They did not flash. They did not do anything because they're not um, impacted by the giant thirsty starter dropping to 12 volts down to 10 or below. So we're in good shape with that and everything is excellent. Also check this out. The Lowrances are like a rock. 